put the gender imbalance in our seat. Very good. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. We would like to uh, thank you for being here for the fourth Alaska House Majority Coalition press availability of the session. Very pleased this morning to be joined by member of the House Finance Committee, Representative David Guttenberg from Fairbanks, uh, the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Representative Matt Clayman from Anchorage, and the chair of the Health and Social Services Committee, also from Anchorage, uh, Representative Ivy Sponholtz. Um, this past week, actually, um, as we enter into the fourth week, things have uh, picked up speed. It's been very busy. I've been getting a lot of uh, uh, visits from uh, constituents and trade organizations and uh, many Alaskans uh, who largely are conveying the same message that there's concern about uh, the fiscal sustainability of the state. Um, I've been able to talk to the Alaska general contractors, uh, Linden, uh, Alaska air carriers, uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, from Anchorage as well as the statewide chamber and, and a host of others all who are bringing uh, sort of the same message forward that they expect the legislature to take uh, decisive action this session on uh, creating a sustainable uh, future for Alaska. So with those opening comments, uh, good morning, Representative Guttenberg. Good morning. Um, this week and I think today we're gonna be hearing more about House Bill 23, the Survivor Benefits Bill, which I think is a very important piece of legislation. Personally, it means something to me. I think we're going to move something out that, that works for Alaskans and the survivors. Um, it's a, a topic that's been hotly handled, and I think we're ready to, to take care of it, to deal with it. We're going to hear from the director of ISCR on Friday on the state of the economy, which will be interesting. We're continuing the budget subcommittee process, keeping the downward pressure on, the, on, the, on state government by department. Each of us are handling a couple or a few of those. Um, we're, we're churning away, we're examining what, what the state government does, how it does it, what it costs, and we'll continue to do that through the budget process. Um, we're going to continue to look at things that keep the pressure down, but we also have to leave the state prepared to take care of all of its opportunities, whether it's keeping our children educated, the university funded, um, the uh, opening Arctic leaves a lot of um, things that are going to be open for us to take advantage of, and we need to make sure we don't um, undermine our efforts to do that as well. Representative Clement. Good morning, it's good to be here this morning. A lot of what we've been hearing in judiciary is we've been hearing a lot of discussion about criminal justice reform. This is an important topic for Alaskans. It began four years ago under Governor Parnell, and there was a recognition that our results were actually getting worse. We were seeing actually a gradual decline in property crimes while there was an increase in violent crimes. And so the criminal justice reform, which is, is an ongoing effort, is an effort both to improve results and improve public safety. What, we've, what we have seen is that, the, that, that people have been real frustrated that the number of people are getting back out of jails in a three-year period. Two out of three people who come out of jails were returning to the prison system, which suggests it's not working. And so we're really making progress on justice reform. The Criminal Justice Commission has come up with recommendations. We'll be looking at those recommendations carefully in the Judiciary Committee as we move forward. Uh, the second area that has gotten some recent attention on Judiciary Committee is House Bill 44 involving conflicts of interest in the legislature. And what we've been hearing from the public is there's a feeling that legislatures are, legislators aren't upfront about potential conflicts, and there's really no means exists today if a legislator has a financial conflict for them to be excused from voting. And the reason voters are unhappy about that is they see on a local level, level in assemblies that when somebody has a financial interest as a cit citizen legislator, that they can actually be excused from voting, and there's no provision for that here in the legislature. So Representative Gren's bill is an effort to actually increase that transparency and create a mechanism for people who have conflicts to be excused from voting. And that's an effort to improve public confidence in the very work we're doing for Alaskans here in Juneau. So thanks for having me here today and look forward to your questions. Representative Sponholtz. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So in uh, health and social services, there is a lot going on. Today at 3 p.m., we're going to be hearing from the consultant that worked on the privatization study for the Alaska Psychiatric Institute. I think one of the things that's really important about those privatization studies is that they serve as sort of an informal audit in many ways. And one of the things that we learned through that process is that privatization of Alaska Psychiatric, uh, Psychiatric Institute actually would not save the state money. There were some individual recommendations or potential um, areas of savings uh, that we're going to be exploring in that, and that hearing is going to be today at 3 p.m. in Hess. Uh, we're also working on uh, the outrageous cost of health care in the state of Alaska. You know, this is a nationwide problem, but the state of Alaska, it's even worse. Um, and so uh, I'll be introducing legislation on Friday that uh, will be focusing on price transparency. What we know is that um, the the marketplace, the uh, cap, you know, the uh, marketplace doesn't work in health care because consumers don't actually know what things cost when they go to their health care providers. And so we want to make sure that people have that kind of information when they go to their doctor, when they go to the emergency department, when they go to an urgent care, that those places are going to have the list of the top uh, services that are performed there in transparent, readily available form, and that those will also be available on websites. We want to start the conversation about what is what are reasonable costs for health care and make sure that consumers have the information they need to be informed. Um, and then finally, you may have heard that the Affordable Care Act is in the process of potentially being repealed. And uh, I want to make uh, clear that I really oppose the repeal of the Affordable Care Act without a replacement. The Affordable Care Act in the state of Alaska has meant that 34,000 Alaskans benefited from Medicaid expansion. Those were our working poor people who um, are one medical emergency away from homelessness or a financial disaster. Uh, my previous experience working in the Salvation Army, I saw those people come to our home homeless shelters and food banks every day. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen. We also know that tens of thousands of other Alaskans benefited from being able to participate in the health care exchange, from being um, not eliminated by uh, health care uh, healthcare insurers because of pre-existing conditions, and for young adults who uh, are not yet financially independent. So we want to make sure that if there is a refill appeal repeal of the Affordable Care Act, that there's a reasonable replacement that, um, that is going to make sure that Alaskans are served well. Thank you. Well, as we turn to questions, we would uh, remind, as we always do, uh, please state your name and your affiliation. Um, Austin Baird from KTU, uh, Rep Representative Von Holes, kind of on the same topic you were just discussing. Um, how should the state respond if federal dollars for Medicaid expansion go away, even if you oppose a repeal without a replacement? How should the state respond if those dollars do go away? Uh, you know, the... Uh the devil is in the details, and what we don't have on the table right now is any individual proposal. Um, there is has been some discussion about uh, block grants. Uh, we know that states like Alaska don't fare, fare well under block grants. Block grants work really well when you have large economies of scale and condensed population centers, which we, of course, don't have in the largest state in the nation with one of the lowest population centers. Um, so what we need to be doing is be working with our congressional delegation, and I'm meeting with Senator Murkowski uh, uh, later this month when she's in Juneau to be talking about what kinds of things our congressional delegation should be advocating for on behalf of Alaskans. James Brooks from the Juneau Empire. Later this week we'll hear a bill from the minority which has been relatively unusual in the past legislatures. Why are you doing something different? Are you speaking about the bill that's going to be on the House floor? Yeah, well when we started um, uh, the session, it was our commitment to treat all legislation uh, uh, based on a merit system. And uh, the bill that's coming before the House, uh, I think it's tomorrow, Representative Thompson's bill, um, it's a good bill. And it deserves to uh, be uh, fully considered. And uh, it's my expe expectation it's going to get a lot of support. Why not uh, return it to for tap as the previous majority minority system had done? Well, as a coalition, we made the decision, again, that we were going to work with everyone fairly. And I'm not going to speak about what happened in the past so much as to look forward and to say that our commitment is to uh, putting forward good legislation and uh, building, really, uh, a consensus-based system that um, sort of honors bills that come forward that do the most for Alaskans. Let me just add to that. The, I hear again and again when I'm out in the communities, if it's a good idea, you ought to pass it. 
Good morning, Liz Rains with KTVA. Both bodies have agreed that the fiscal um, uh, problem in the state, the state's budget problem, is a priority this session, and um, the House Majority Caucus has agreed that it wants to see some sort of a broad-based tax and changes in oil tax credits moving forward. Um, now in week four of this session, can you describe uh, what, what the process looks like moving forward with that when we might see um, an, uh, something like an income tax proposal or oil tax credit proposal come through? Well, I'd like to defer just here in a moment to Representative Guttenberg, who sits on the Finance Committee, but to once again say that uh, things have been very busy uh, in the Finance Committee here in the House with a lot of agency work on constructing budgets. Subcommittees are meeting uh, several times over each day. So there's a, a lot going on. Um, and any fiscal plan that comes forward, of course, is going to be um, complicated in the sense that there's going to be a number of moving parts. Um, what I can say is that... Uh, we're looking forward to un un um, unveiling later on this week uh, legislation that we think uh, could possibly be the centerpiece of the House uh, Majority Coalition uh, fiscal plan. But again, uh, we're going to you know, go back to that mantra that uh, seems to come up every week, that everything really is on the table. And we're going to look at everything, including what the governor's offered. Representative Guttenberg? Yeah, thank you, Speaker Wright. Um, Edgman. Um, Everything is on the table. Later this week, you'll see a couple pieces of legislation, which will be the cornerstone um, uh, for a plan that we hope to, to move forward. But when we're talking about dealing with the permanent fund, and taxes, and all those things, you can't leave out anything. When you're talking to the individual Alaskan about um, uh, restructuring the permanent fund and how it will affect them, and possibly a broad range fiscal fiscal tax across the state. You can't leave oil tax credits off the table. You can't leave oil credits off the table. So it's going to be a broad conversation that's going to touch everything. I mean, and all these things in the past have been major, major roadblocks to getting through a legislative session. But this is the year it has to be done. Our reserves are, our, our savings are down. They're dwindling to, um, to nothing. We don't have an option. We have to get something done. All those things are on the table. They will all be considered. And we have a, we've talked about a four-legged stool to get out of here. Um, but we have to do that. That's what the people want. Uh, I think that's why we're sitting at this table now. They wanted action. They wanted something done. Um, we are constitutionally mandated to get a budget out. And we are committed to doing that. Um, good morning, Nat Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, there was uh, new legislation, I think it's a resolution from one of your minority colleagues yesterday, Representative Eastman. Um, it would affect the 24-hour rule, which um, I assume all you guys are familiar with that, but basically my understanding of the way it works now is that there, after a conference committee is appointed, uh, the legislature's uniform rules allow meetings to be noticed uh, with as little as 24 hours in advance instead of a week, um, except that that is often sort of treated by default as the day before, um, which means that sometimes uh, folks like us and the public can get, you know, as little as like 12 hours or less of, uh, of a meeting. And um, I think Representative Eastman is trying to uh, bring those rules into kind of uh, so that they are better reflective of what actually happens where uh, you just have to give notice the day before rather than 24 hours in advance. Um, and I know that seems maybe like a small thing, but i um, curious sort of whether you guys, how you guys feel about that idea. Representative Clayman, did you want to address that? Uh, well, Representative Eastman addressed the bill, introduced the bill just yesterday. It's been referred to the Judiciary Committee. Uh, we will take a look at it. I actually received it yesterday. We had a pretty full-packed committee schedule, and I have not looked at the details of Representative